Copper is a great conductor of heat, which is a sought-after property in brake pad material. Brakes use friction to stop a vehicle, and that friction generates a lot of heat in both the pads and the rotors. That heat needs to be dissipated in order to reduce wear, damage, and brake fade. So if copper is this useful in brake pads, why remove it? As brake pads wear out, the material that doesn't stick to your rims ends up in the road, and the stuff in the road ends up in natural bodies of water. The copper, as well as other materials in the brake pad, end up harming aquatic life in various ways. As for the financial incentive to change, the cost of copper has gone up dramatically since 2003 and in general. The biggest manufacturers of brake pads will of course benefit drastically from not having to put copper into their brake pads. Outlawing it entirely though prevents competitors from potentially using copper to make a better product. This is likely the reason that many major automotive lobbying groups were on board with this change. So what does this mean for the consumer? For starters, you will be seeing these leaf marks on brake pad boxes if you're buying them yourself. One leaf means it's not compliant with any of the modern changes. Two leaves means that it's 5% or less copper by weight. Three leaves means that it's 0.5% copper or less. Are these new environmentally friendly brake pads going to perform like the previous generation did? What I have read online and also my own personal experience with a high-end brand has shown that they actually perform better than the previous ones. In addition, some companies weren't even using copper to begin with, so this change won't affect them. The low copper rule doesn't go into effect until the early 2020s, so manufacturers still have plenty of time to get all the kinks worked out of their new materials. If you'd like to learn more, check out carsimplify.com or explore our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.